Hi everybody, Ziv Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master, the surgical training for dentists. Welcome to a quick lecture on a very interesting procedure called surgical lip repositioning. And we have a lot of patients in the practice that are concerned with their gummy smile and they're sometimes embarrassed about it. And the question is, what can we do to help them? What are, what are the uh, treatment options to help patients with a gummy smile? Well, it depends. It depends on the diagnosis. What is the diagnosis or etiology that is responsible for their gummy smile? And I would definitely encourage you to learn about the reasons for a gummy smile so you know exactly what's going on, so you can recommend the appropriate treatment for your patients and be successful with it. So in summary, the uh, one reason for uh, gummy smiles is a skeletal deformity that is called vertical maxillary excess. That's an excessive size of the maxilla in the vertical dimension. The second etiology is uh, some type of abnormal eruption pattern called delayed eruption. It could be delayed active or passive. So again, learn about that so you, so you know what it entails. And also some patients that go through attrition and the teeth erupt as a compensatory mechanism, as the teeth erupt, they erupt with the gum tissue and the bone, creating a gummy smile. So a gummy smile can, can be also something that develops over time. And some patients have lip hypermobility. That's a very strong muscle pull. When they smile, the muscle pull is that significant that uh, the lips are being stretched to the sides and a lot of the gum tissue is showing in the smile. These patients, by the way, have a normal rest position. So it's mostly the muscle pull. So based on the diagnosis, you can offer patients some treatment. That could be orthognatic surgery in cases of uh, vertical maxillary excess or aesthetic crown lengthening for delayed eruption patterns, uh, possibly Botox injections for the hypermobile lip. And you can also consider orthodontic intrusion. And uh, what that does, it, it actually moves the teeth, including the supporting structures, apically, and that can reduce the gummy display. Now, the fifth option is the procedure I'd like to explain to you that is called surgical lip repositioning. So before we talk about the procedure, a little bit about the smile. Uh, when we look at the smile muscles, we're looking at spreader muscles moving the lip to the side or sideways, and elevator muscles moving the lip upwards or apical. The goal of the procedure is to limit the retraction of the elevator muscles. So when those are limited, the patient can basically smile less in an, uh, in a, in an upwards direction, and that basically reduces the gummy display. So that's the goal of the procedure. Now, this is not a new procedure. It was invented, the, uh, actually described over 40 years ago, uh, and the original article was in uh, Spanish, and, and I don't speak Spanish, but I, I had it translated and I, and I studied it very thoroughly. Basically, what they described is removing a strip of mucosa from underneath the lip. And once they sutured the, um, the gap, what that created is a limitation on the elevator muscles. So the patient could not smile as high and they called it an aesthetic malformation, so they were able to correct it, and that's, that was the, pace, the basis of uh, how I learned to do this procedure. There are also uh, a few other articles in the medical literature, mostly in plastic surgery, that describe the procedure in different modifications and different techniques, uh, so you can definitely read about it, but uh, really start with the dental literature. Uh, the two first articles uh, were written by myself and by my partner, Dr. Ari Rosenblatt, and we described case reports, the step-by-step -step technique, how this is being done, and, uh, and basically you can read those articles. I'm happy to email them to you so you can study them. And ever since then, there were more and more articles written in the dental literature. So how's the, how does the surgical technique work? Uh, first of all, you need to have a diagnosis. You need to know what's the etiology, what's the reason a patient has a gummy smile. In this case, uh, it's more of a skeletal issue to some extent, uh, which we know is better treated with um, orthognatic surgery. But uh, most patients, you know, at a certain po 
po- point in time, in uh, part uh, point in life, don't like to have this invasive surgery. So lip repositioning is certainly an alternative. Now the incision outline includes two main incisions, one being at the mucogingival junction, okay? And the other incision is in the vestibule, about 10 to 12 millimeters more apical. Now, you will connect those incisions and create a banana-shaped type of incision outline. You can also mark the incision if it makes it easier for you with a surgical pen, sterile pen, so you know exactly what the outline is. So one incision at the mucogingival junction, one incision uh, up in the mucosa, actually going through the frenum. We originally called this procedure a reverse phrenectomy, interestingly enough. Then you connect both incision lines and then you create this incision outline. What you do next is remove the strip of mucosa. That's done with a sharp dissection. Very carefully, you'll expose the underlying connective tissue, blood vessels, uh, sometimes salivary glands. It bleeds a little bit, so you need to control the bleeding quite well. And once the strip of mucosa, mucosa has been removed, and you see this here on the right, uh, the next step is to suture. So you start by suturing the midline of the lip with the midline of the teeth, so we don't create any crooked smile, obviously, and create a good alignment, and then you start by creating a continuous interlocking suture to get very nice and tight closure, and that takes probably about 20, 25 minutes to make sure everything is nice and tight. That's really the secret for the, um, for the procedure, so it doesn't open up and we don't get uh, significant amounts of relapse. And when the patient heals, we can see a reduction in the gummy display. We can't always eliminate it 100%, depending on how bad it's uh, started from. But we can definitely get a reduction to a point where patients are uh, much happier in regards to their smile. Another side effect that we notice, actually a positive side effect, is that the upper lip gets everted. It actually increases in volume because when we are reducing the inside of the lip, uh, when the patient is smile and stretches it, it actually looks like it's thicker. So that, that is a side effect that patients were, were very happy about. Now, you need to be very good about diagnosis. And again, go back to your, uh, your lessons, your handouts in regards to aesthetic chronic thinning because some patients will have both. They'll have delayed eruption patterns. They'll have short teeth, abnormal teeth proportions like this patient has. And they will also have maxillary excess and, and excessive maxilla. So sometimes you need to do both. You need to do crown lengthening and lip repositioning. So that is uh, what was done with this particular patient. Uh, we'll look at the short video showing the uh, diagnosis, basically measuring from the mucogingival junction and uh, measuring into the vestibule about 10 to 12 millimeters. And then adding the local anesthesia, not just for pain control, but we also need to make sure that we control the bleeding, what we call hemostasis. The bleeding is uh, relatively significant when we make those incisions in the lip. So here you're seeing incision number one at the mucogingival junction going through the frenum, and incision number two more apical to it, about 10, 12 millimeters. And then with a sharp dissection, we are removing the strip of mucosa exposing the underlying connective tissue. As I said, this will bleed quite a bit, so um, you know, take your time, focus on hemostasis, uh, use electrosurgery as needed, pressure, local anesthetic, the bleeding will be definitely under control. Then you start the relatively long process of suturing, uh, spend the time doing it meticulously, carefully, make sure that everything is nice and tight, and you'll get really nice results. I mean, what we're looking at here is a, a, a result of two procedures done at the same time. One is aesthetic crown lengthening. You're seeing the teeth proportions are improved. And we're seeing the result of lip repositioning, reducing the gummy smile from the other end. And eventually the patient can have a really nice, pleasing result and, and uh, much better uh, all in all overall appearance. So the lip repositioning made, made a big difference, but also the aesthetic chronic thinning. There are very few complications that are associated with the procedure. There could be some swelling and bruising, um, maybe a hematoma under the eye can happen, but it's very rare. There, there will be very little side effects uh, with this procedure. Uh, very rarely uh, mucosal 
uh, a mucosal can form. That's basically when the small salivary glands get traumatized and they secrete saliva under the mucosa. It's self-resolving and of course resolving. And of course, the procedure can relapse to some extent over time because the muscles are still stretching the mucosa and that can uh, the vestibule can recreate itself. So that's still the unknown and uh, it definitely differs between patients. Here's an example of a mucosal right at the incision line uh, with a little bubble. Basically, it's saliva. It'll uh, resolve itself. Not a problem. Patients will report there. Yeah, they have these little bubbles and they pop and everything is uh, typically okay. Okay, So don't be uh, too worried about, worried about that. Some of the uh, bruising and swelling, again, they resolve, resolve by themselves. Uh, the swelling after two, three days, the bruising uh, or hematoma uh, usually takes about a week to 10, to 10 days. Uh, there are a few relative contraindications that you need to be careful about. If the soft tissue is very thin, uh, not too much attached in keratinous tissue, you may want to be careful with your suturing and, and also with the incisions and careful when you resect the tissue. Uh, if you're going to expose a dehiscence or a fenestration, you sometimes can predict that. Or if there's a case of very extreme jaw deformity or very strong muscle pull, that may not be the right procedure because, you know, the tendency to relapse is relatively high. Now, a very absolute, absolute contraindication is if the mucogingival junction is visible before the surgery. Uh, there will be a scar forming at the mucogingival junction. So if the patient has a relapse, all of a sudden the scar will show. Now they're worse off. They have a gummy smile plus a scar. So that's not going to be fun. So make sure that the mucogingival junction is not visible before. In case there's a relapse and the scar forms, at least the scar will not be visible. And here is unfortunately uh, a case. A patient was referred to me with a scar that is now visible in a smile because the surgery was a little bit too aggressive, uh, taking a lot of the attached tissue. So don't make any resection, make the incision right at the mucogingival junction, and also make sure that it's not visible before, because this is a very difficult situation to address and retreat, okay? So be careful of those scars. Um, definitely, I would encourage you to read more about the procedure. I'm happy to email you uh, both articles that were uh, written by me and by my partner, Dr. Rosenblatt, on the subject. You can uh, look at the step-by-step -step and read about it uh, a little bit more. This is uh, the first article that was written, a uh, case report on the excessive gingival display with lip and, and the treatment with lip repositioning. And the second article also describing an interesting case where the gummy smile was reduced with lip repositioning. So here you have it. It's another treatment option for a gummy smile. Make sure that you know the uh, potential reasons why patients are having a gummy smile and all the different treatment options. And you can now consider this as another option for your patients. Uh, take into account that this may relapse over time, so you may want to build this in into your consent form and definitely discuss this uh, with your patients. So I hope this information was useful to you. I hope you learned a little bit more about surgical lip repositioning. I'm glad that I was able to help you with that. And if you're interested in more information, visit us at surgicalmaster.com for more information.